Kenny, we start with maybe just a, a thought on, on Connor and you know what he accomplished this year and obviously winning the, the, the awards last night. Well, I think it was one of the greatest uh, seasons in the, in the history of a player. Uh, was he fourth, fifth, or sixth highest point yeah. total? And ever when you factor in, uh, you know, the way the, the game is played uh, today, you know, a uh, little tighter checking, the parity in the league uh, even makes it more remarkable. But certainly, uh, the greatest player of his generation, and being around him for four years, you know, his drive, his motivation, his determination. He uh, takes him to another level. Well, that's the thing. He's still driven to win that Stanley Cup. Like he's, he's going to be a motivated guy coming back next year. Yeah, I think our whole group is. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, obviously, he's the captain and the leader of the team. I know that. Uh, um, certainly, that's uh, that's our goal. Okay. Derek Ryan talked about how after that loss, there's lots of guys crying in the room that this this loss seemed to really sting more to, to Vegas. Do you, do you sense that from your team and? How does that change your outlook in the summer, knowing kind of what your team feels like? I think Leon Drysaddle said it. We got to stop beating ourselves. So, how do you, as a GM, how do you build the team maybe different at all, if anything, or are you less aggressive because you feel like your team's close? They just have to make less mistakes. I think you have to put yourself in that situation multiple times. Um, obviously, along the way, um, you make changes, tweaks, uh, changes. Um, and then I think the experience of being there in those situations multiple times over ultimately makes a, a difference. I think we had talked at the year end was I think it was Vegas's fourth time in the last six years in the Final Four. You know, you look at the journey that Tampa Bay went through. Um, certainly that's the journey we went through when I was in Detroit a long, long time ago. But I, I don't know if it's ever going to change. It's, it's, uh, you just got to be there multiple times um, and you keep banging on the door. And uh, that's what we got to do. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, some RFAs that are, are needing deals. Any any update or how are things going with it? We'll start maybe with Evan Bouchard. Anything there? I mean, lots of talk. You know, basically it's lots of talk or you, or you have an announcement of a, of a deal. So uh, I, I can't give you a timeline. Um, We've, we have, I've had a number of conversations, but not only here, I think two, three times, but uh, over the last two, three weeks, we've, we've had the three, four talks. You'd be a prime candidate for an offer sheet. Like, do, do those even happen anymore? Like, is that something that concerns you guys? Um, I don't really, I mean, can't say I don't think about it. Obviously, if there's an offer sheet given, then, then uh, we'll assess it at the time. Would we like to get them signed uh, uh, before? Would, uh, would love to, but it's got to, it's got to work for both sides. Liam Costin and Ryan McLeod, you expect to qualify them? Um, and then, obviously, I'm assuming they file for arbitration. Just kind of gives you a set deadline on when on to get um, we, Yeah, we filed a QO on, uh, on McLeod. Um, not sure what I'm doing on Costin. Uh, the reason being, obviously, being a Russian player, the KHL. Uh, he's had conversations with the KHL. So i got to decide here over the next three or four days what we're doing with the Klim. Ken, what are the challenges? Being on the or what are the I mean what's your perspective being on the outside looking in at what this first round kind of look, look looks like especially the top ten? Well, I don't want to pick in the top ten. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. It's I'd rather I'd rather not have a first round pick. You know I think we've got a good team. Um, obviously, I traded the first round pick at the deadline uh, for Ekholm. We've got him for three more years. Um, you know, there's a lot of pain that goes with a top 10 pick. And then, you know, the reality is uh, you never know with the draft. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit of a guessing game. Uh, somebody in the fifth round can be somebody better than the first round. It's, he will know in five, six years. So, uh, um, you know, those are decisions that we've made. You know, we, we've traded picks. We're, we're in the win-now mode. I guess it just, just as a follow-up, just I, I know it's going to be difficult for you, but teams are trying to crack into that top 10 by trading up. The challenges of doing that. I mean, is it is it even feasible given you know, um, given how? I just look at history. History suggests it rarely happens. So every year, there's all these rumors and same. You know, someone's trying to get up. Does it happen occasionally? Yeah, it happens occasionally, but but not very often. We don't have a first round pick, so the reality of us trying to get into the the, the, the top ten, it, it's not going to happen. Clarify something you said on Clint Costin. What you know? Any any interest from a KHL team? Why would that prevent you from from giving a uh, a QO to him? What what's, what's the concern maybe on your part of offering a QO? Uh, it's about the negotiations. On uh, Philip Broberg. I mean, we all see what you've got on your blue line. You've got a, lots of players there. 
Uh, he's a young player that needs to play. What's your sort of approach with him this off season, and maybe what what you is there space well, I mean, to carve look, out? For you, you know, Ryan, you look at um, you know you look at uh, Evan Bouchard where he was when he was 21 years of age, the same age uh, we were in the Canadian division. I think he played 11 games out of the 56. Um, had to kind of wait his time, and uh, it's turned out pretty good. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not going to tell you that uh, Philip. I think Philip is a different player than than Evan Bouchard. Um, so, you know, when you've got a, we're in the win now mode. You know, that's why I acquired a 32 year old defenseman by the name of Ekholm at the deadline. That's why I re-signed, um, you know, the moves that we made at Kulak. So obviously, it, it it makes it more difficult for young players to play. Um, so, you know, we're trying to win. We're trying to win. What's my message? We're trying to win. And I got to figure out exactly how we get Philip Broberg from where he's at to being a regular. Uh, we've got to sort that out. How much of a weapon or, or tactic is a um, kind of a bonus related deal for you for, to, to offer to players that are either 35 plus or that have had injury histories uh, recently that, you know, you could offer them a low base and a, and a high. Uh, you know, bonus structure. How, how enticing is that? Is that for you to offer? Uh, well, I mean, it's 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 obviously the bonuses are going to hit the cap next year. It's not like they they, they don't count. So, um, all depends. All de everything's numbers related. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's it's all numbers related. And then you got to look at the numbers and and see how the how the, the numbers affect the team this year and next year. Is the cap going up? Is that Potentially, anyway, is the cap going up next? Well, year? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping yeah. it's going to go five million dollars. You know, but but I mean, obviously, if it goes up five million dollars, and are you talking two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of bonus money, or are you talking five million dollars of bonus money? It's, <laughs> it's, for you it's, to it's, it's a, yeah. So that's I don't really have an answer for you because it's all numbers related. How Saying much that, of your strategy this off season is about trying to return as much of the group as you can, as opposed to any major additions. Well, I think that's the that's the reality. Uh, it's it's you know the the core pieces are signed up. I, other than maybe Bush is kind of growing into being, uh, you know, after the Barry trade, um, and McLeod, he, you know, he's he's the third line center. That's a real important position on your team. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, I I guess what I'm my focus really is on probably the bottom six of our team. I thought the bottom six of our team last year pitched in with, uh, with everybody had ten goals. Um, we had really good secondary scoring. Um, I thought our bottom six uh, contributed in the playoffs. You know, we got some goals out of Bukestad, goals out of Fogel, goals out of um, uh, McLeod had a goal. I think uh, Derek Ryan, Costin had a big night in LA. So um, now all those players, you know, Bukestad was at 450. You know, Costin was at 750. McLeod was at 800. So they're not playing for those figures. Cap's gone up $1 million. We do have some money coming free on the Sekera buyout, on the Lucic buyout. Um, obviously, Stu Skinner's going up almost $2 million a year. He was 750 dollars last year. He's going up to 2.6. Bouchard wants a raise. McLeod wants a raise. So I'm trying to keep as many of the pieces together. Um, we're going to lose some players. Um, you know, maybe it's and it's an opportunity, you know, Dylan Holloway maybe to play a bigger role and um, kind of explore the market. Uh, Probably July two, three, four. I think everybody's looking for uh, for cheaper players. Or certainly, there's probably 10 or 12, 14 teams that are that are in a similar situation to us. We've been talking a lot about Kyler Yamamoto. His name is very much out there. You know, have you spoken to Kyler? And what can you say about kind of his status moving forward here? We all know where you're at on the yeah. cap. Yeah, I have not spoken to uh, Kyler yet. I'm still uh, working the phones, and I got to see what uh, what um, transpires. I mentioned July two, three, four. Is that kind of more the market you think you're shopping in? Like you, you, July one, obviously you're going to make calls, but you. you I, I kind of look at July one as the, the the the, you know the people are getting term, big big cap numbers. I mean we're not in, you know I'm looking for like I said I'm really focused on the on the bottom six for the most part of our forward group. You know I got to get Bouchard signed, I uh, got to get McLeod signed, and then you know got to kind of finish off the pieces. Now mode, I know you don't have a first round pick this year, but what kind of opportunity are your scouts telling you exists in this draft for your team this year? Well, I th they think there's, uh, they believe there's going to be some players in the second round that play in the National Hockey League down the road. Um, we got to get one of them. You open to go in the buyout route if you need to to clear up some space this year. Well, sometimes teams are, but you. 
Good right shot, puck moving defenseman. Uh, when you're in the second round, do you, can you go more for need as an organization, or is it still best player available? How does it change from the second round to? Maybe uh, I mean, I, I think you're going for best player available. I think the. The reality is the 32 players that go in the second round, I mean, how many years are they away from playing regular in the National Hockey League? You know, it's not a year or two, it's probably three to five years. And so, you know, the team could be looking much different in three to five years. So I think you're, you're looking for the best player available, the player that's got the, the highest upside that you think will have the biggest impact in the NHL down the road. And Raphael Lavoie, is that somebody you see as competing and potentially filling out a spot in your bottom six? Yes, I mean, he, yes. Uh, Ralph, he had a great second half. I think he scored 25 goals this year, most of them from December 1st on. Um, you know, he's had a couple, tough couple of years with injuries, got healthy. Uh, I believe he's uh, working out very hard uh, this offseason. We're going to give him uh, lots of preseason games and because obviously he's a waiver player, so we have to make a decision on him. What's your status, Ken? I know you're going into the last year of your contract. Are you looking at, you want to finish this thing off? Are you looking to extend? Or what's how I'm you looking mean? to win. Yeah. <laughs> but if it doesn't happen this year, do you want to stay the year after the year? I'm not worried. Yeah, I think I told you I don't invest in green bananas at this <laughs> stage of my life. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not worried about myself. You know, I've certainly, the, I'm, I'm, uh, my juices are, are, are flowing because I think we have a good team. Um, and, you know, I want to I wanna win. Is the organization engaged in a process to figure out what would be next for the GM position, though? You're, you, you occupy that's, the other role, yeah, too. I don't so. really, I don't, that's not really me. I, I, that's not really my thing, obviously. Uh, I just worry about being the general manager of the Edmonton Oilers and my day-to-day -day responsibilities. Um, I have another year to go on my contract. I'm excited. I got lots of, lots of I got to call it juice, lots of energy. Sure. Lots of, uh, you know, I, uh, I still enjoy the challenge. Um, and you know, lots of rumors out. Let the rumors fly. I mean, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to I'm, let, I'm trying to win and try to do my job on a day-to-day -day basis. You open to hanging around longer if uh, maybe it doesn't mean being the guy in front of us. Yeah, so I'm open. I'm open to anything. Uh, we'll, we'll see. If right, right now, right now, my focus, like I said, is on the, the day. Obviously, right now, from now till July sixth or seventh, obviously, is a real critical key time um, for any organization, for 32 organizations. And then, uh, uh, you know, and my goal, obviously, my, my is to try to put a team on the ice that can compete with the best teams in the league. And, you know, I'll worry about the future when, the, like I said, the, the green banana program. <laughs> <laughs>